All right, we just did the capital OAC. Now let's look at the lowercase OAC. This is a great next place for us to go and to study. Um, these letters go great together. I mean, they're all small letters in the sense that they go from the baseline to the X height. And they all, all feature um, these oval shapes again. So with the O, we obviously have the oval in the body of the letter itself. The A, again, just like the capital version, we have this O that's kind of on its side for this first part of the A. And then the C, again, the back of the C is just like that rounded oval shape as well. Maybe a little straighter than our actual O, but it's it's really based on, on a part of that oval shape. Um, so let's look at each of these letters individually, and we'll work them together in connections. Um, just making the O very simple. This is a different type of entry stroke than we've seen so far. So we've been doing underturns with our I, U, W, and E to enter letters. Now we're gonna do an overturn. So if we remember, say we have our main connective, or our connective slant like this on our grid. Remember this is our 30 degree connective slant. The overturn is going to go curve over that, like that, okay? Whereas our underturn goes under like that. So with the O, I'll make it nice and big here. We're gonna have an entry stroke that goes overturn, entry stroke. Then we make our oval on slant. And then just like our W, we're gonna exit from the top. So just come down a little bit on that O and do a little curve like that out of the letter. All right, and again, our O, the oval itself should be on our main slant, our 60 degrees, and then this connective stroke, this entry stroke is going to be on our connective slant of 30 degrees. All right, let's show it now at our actual size, not enlarged. Notice I'm just picking up the pen at the end here to make this little exit stroke. I'm putting it down on the side of that O and then I'm just curling out with that exit stroke. All right. Just like our capital O, we wanna have a oval that is not too round. We don't want an O that looks like this, like a circle. We wanna have a nice oval shape, a compressed circle. You might think of it when you make that O. And we want it to be on slant. All right, let's look at our A. We're gonna hit that A shape again, that almond shape, you might think of it. If I do it big again, we have our overturn in, then we're doing that almond shape. So a nice rounded, uh, nice rounded shape on this side of this oval, this almond shape, tight turn at the bottom, and then we're just doing an eye. Coming up with a regular eye, coming down, and we'll finish the top like this for our lowercase. Now that's the big version. Again, we have our connective slant here, our connective slant here. We want those to be about the same. We have our main slant here as well. We have our connective slant here as well. All right, there's that eye. There's that eye right here. Hope you can see that. Let's make it at regular size. Coming in, coming out, finishing with the eye. All right. Again, the main things to look for is that consistency of that connective slant on the beginning and the ending and in the middle of the letter. And then this I part, this downstroke coming down on that main slant. All right. Let's go on to the C. Do this one big as well. Coming in with an overturn entry stroke again. Doing a little hook here. See that little hook stroke? Then I'm just gonna follow it back up. A nice little rounded, but fairly straight back to the C and a tight turn at the bottom. That tight turn, we don't want those rounded turns out of our C's. I will do it small for you. Hook, come down, tight turn at the bottom. I'd much rather have a flat back to the C than a one that's too rounded, okay? It's on the main slant. I don't want to see this. All right, that's not the look we're going for with this script. That's not, this letter's not gonna look in place with the rest of the script if it has this rounded turn at the bottom, all right? 
Um, all right. That is the C, pretty simple letter. But all these, all three of these letters are pretty simple, which is why we're tackling them early on in the course. But let's connect them. Let's make things a little more complex. Connect these letters together. So first we'll do our O A, our entry stroke overturn. Make our O. Then we'll see this connection again, which we saw with the W, connecting from the top into our A, curling up and over. Now I exaggerated that a little bit just so you can see the kind of stroke that I'm making. It's curling, it's curling like that and like that. I call that a compound curve, okay? Now it doesn't need to be that exaggerated. I did that on purpose, um, just so you could see the kind of move that you're making with your hand. In fact, actually I'll make this a little bigger, go up to the TD line just to make things a little easier to see. There's our O and then our connection, just like that. Notice has a nice, graceful, subtle curve into the A like that. And we gotta have that because our, our O, the finish on our O, if you remember, it's an under curve, curves up like that, all right? So our, we're finishing with the under curve and then we're transitioning into the over curve for the entry on our A. Remember the entry on our A is an over curve, okay? So that's, what, that's how we get that. And we add, you know, an under curve plus an over curve you get a compound curve. All right, I should have put an equal sign in there. All right, <laughs> there you go. So that's that connection there. Definitely give that some practice and make sure you got that subtle little graceful curve in there. All right, let's look at another, an actual word here, cow. We'll enter our C with an overturn, do a hook, come down. Another little subtle compound curve between that C and the O. Anytime you're exiting with an undercurve, transitioning into an overcurve, you're gonna have that compound curve. All right, then after the O, I'm just going into my W from the top, just like that, and I'm finishing my W. All right, um, you know, it's always a good time to, you know, check our slant. Didn't mean to do that one. This one's on our main slant. This is on our main slant. This O is on pretty much on our main slant, maybe a little tilted over than the others. And our C is on our main slant as well. All right, and then of course we're hitting the X heights, always looking for that, hitting the baseline. Wanna keep everything in that space. Always want that uniformity of size. Um, the spacing between these letters, so we can start looking at, there's two spaces between letters in a three letter word. And we can kind of look at the space between like this, and I can look at it like this. And I can see it's pretty even. Did a pretty good job there. So that's something you just have to learn and get a feel for as you write these letters. And then, you know, the way you really get a feel for it is to look at your work after you do it. And, you know, draw these lines in and try to get a feel for, all right, how much visual space is in between the C and the O? And is it is it the same about the same as between the O and the W? And you can look at it and just, you'll get a feel for it when you look at it right away and then you can start correcting yourself as you're doing it on the fly. All right, let's do this connection here, W-O-U. Like we're writing the word wood, perhaps. Make my W, finishing with that steeper look. That's a really nice W. Go into my O. Very subtle compound curve there from the W to the O. And then again, going from the O to the U. Looking to have really Great space in here. This one looks really well spaced. If I'm just looking at the space between the W and the O and the O and the U, looking very equal. That's great. Looking at our slant, looking pretty good as well. The O may be a little more slanted than the other letters. Could have made that O a little more upright. But all in all, great combination of letters there. Spend some time with these. Things are getting more complicated. Don't be afraid, you know, spend some extra time filling up these sheets, filling up these sheets with these letters by themselves, these connections that I've recommended. And then of course, coming up with your connections um, of your own. We have a lot of letters to work with. I just showed you three, but all the letters you've learned by now, you can actually write quite a few words, come up with a lot of different connections um, to practice with.